Welcome to the Everyday Entrepreneur Show. My name is Cameron Muir, a real estate agent, investor, and entrepreneur. This podcast is for the everyday person all the way to the CEO wanting to build, grow, or scale their business to the next level. Our goal is to educate, network, and motivate so all of us can become everyday entrepreneurs. Hello and welcome back to The Everyday Entrepreneur. I have Michael Arce with me today, the CEO and founder of Ad Astra, a website development company that he has created, founded, and is grinding on currently. Michael, thank you for joining us. No, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're really excited to have you. And so this is going to be a little bit of a spin on um, my episodes because in the past I've had entrepreneurs on that have established businesses and have been business owners for years. And you are fighting through the fire and the flames currently as a new entrepreneur and business owner. What has it been like? Yeah. Kind of tell me how are you doing? Oh, man, it's uh, it's been great. I mean, it's been it's tough, but it's amazing at the same time. It is it's terrifying, but it is liberating. I mean, it's amazing. It's, it's something you can't really describe. You just kind of feel it, you know, and totally. Um, I I mean, the, the name of my company, Ad Astra, comes from a Latin phrase, meaning or that Ad Astra per spera, which means to the stars through adversity. And that's wow. what I feel like I'm doing. I mean, there's there's adversity for sure, but I am getting somewhere where I've never thought of being before. So that is great. super cool. That's amazing. So the funny enough to give you full transparency to the people listening to this, I'm pretty sure I messed up his company name like six times before doing the <laughs> intro to this episode. And so that's a really, really unique meaning behind it. That's super cool. And anyone that's a business owner knows that adversity is your best friend when you become a business owner because you are going to get wrecked in many, many ways. You're going to get wrecked financially, emotionally, and all of the above pretty much. You have to fight through those things that are a struggle when you first start out. And so I want you to break down your journey into entrepreneurship for me what you were doing before what events led you up to take the plunge which i know is something you're really passionate about into the role of an entrepreneur and what it was like building your company and where you're at today so i would i'd love to hear kind of your backstory no absolutely thank you um so i was i was originally working for a landscaping company I uh, was an operations manager, and it was it was a great gig. It paid well, um, and the, the opportunity was there for me to eventually take it over once the owner was gone. So I was pretty set, but um, I felt like I could do more, uh, and I, I felt unfulfilled in my own life, as, as many do, you know. And uh, an opportunity opened up for a web development apprenticeship with a great company in Orem called Dev Pipeline. Fantastic. I, I couldn't recommend them more. Um, and they, they helped me. I mean, I learned how to code and all this stuff. And I thought, sweet, I'm going to be a web developer and, and it'll be great and perfect. And I can do something in the world. Um, but as I was there with them, they decided to try and kind of test the waters on web design. And they asked me to kind of head that up. So I, I was happy to do it. And as I got into it, I, I loved it. I mean, I loved you know, working one-on-one -on -one with clients. I loved getting to know their businesses and kind of helping them become, you know, what they wanted to be, at least, you know, present themselves in a way that, that they're proud of. Um, but Dev Pipeline was kind of split between web development, web design. They didn't have the resources to kind of manage both. And it came to a point where they said, we are going to, you know, nix the web design portion of our company. And um, you can you can do it on your own or you can come to web development and, and it's over. And so that was kind of a, a strange point where I had to sit down and think, you know, what is this? And, and do I have faith in this? You know, do I think I, this can be something better and something bigger? And, you know, I spoke with my wife about it. We figured it out she's been extremely supportive and we, we took the plunge. 
I decided, fine, I'll do it. I started my company. I, I and um, uh, you know, it was scary because we had used all our savings during the apprenticeship. So we had no savings going into this, you know, no resources really put into it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's worked out and it's been great. And, and as, uh, as long as I keep that vision and that focus on where I know I can be and where it can be, um, man, the transformation is, is unbelievable. Man, you are given some serious nuggets which is amazing. So there's a couple things I want to hit on. The The first part is you were kind of given a decision between the lifeline of an employer where they were like, you can continue to do this on your own or you can continue to do what we're he where we're headed. And you were like, no, I'm going to bet on myself. And you jumped headfirst in which is even more intense if you had been doing an apprenticeship and really didn't have the resources that most people jumping into entrepreneurship have to have to feel comfortable. And so it's really, really impressive that you chose to do so. And then the second thing you talked about is the fact that you took this head on knowing that I'm going to have the mindset fortified enough where when it does get hard, I'm going to push through and continue forward because I know I can make myself into something incredible, which is the whole like dopamine hit of entrepreneurship where every morning you wake up, you have your mini heart attack and you're like, I don't know if I can do this. And then your mind kicks in. You're like, no, I'm a boss. I can do this. And then throughout the rest of the day, you grind your face off to make it happen. And so Tell me, and this is this is a little bit of side tangent, but most people when they start a business, they think it's something super, super complex and they're like, I don't even know where to start. But in reality, how hard was it for you to go from employed to self-employed, setting up a business for yourself? What did that look like? To actually do it, it was surprisingly easy. I mean, you know, going through the, the legal paperwork, federal, and state level so easy um yeah. and, and you know google's your best friend you find out what the best practices are you know podcasts and all that good stuff there's so much out there to help you do it in a way in the best way possible and it's readily there so i mean if you if you put in the time to just do that research oh it's so easy yeah which and is the, the hardest part i guess is is your inside of yourself actually saying okay this is a change from the life side of them living to a completely new ground, new territory. Yeah. And that, that was, that was the hard part. Yeah. And I think that's so important to focus on is people get hung up on the logistical side of things when that's, you can, that can be done within a matter of 24 hours setting everything up. And, and they, the other side that they don't necessarily prepare for is what people don't see that goes on in the background of being an entrepreneur where once you set up your business and everything and say, oh yeah, I'm self-employed, there are some demons that come with that on a daily basis that are super, super challenging to handle sometimes. And so um, we'll circle back to that. I want to one, just one hear about how you realize that this was an opportunity and what you are doing to provide the market with a hole that is currently being underappreciated. So kind of tell me a little bit about how you took the idea that you were doing at your previous company and are turning it into your own self-employment entrepreneurial journey. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess the thing that I would say I'm doing differently or I've evolved in is just that, that interpersonal connection with the client. Um, that's something that I've always loved and, and I didn't have enough chances for it when I was employed elsewhere, but just being able to get to know the person, know their business. I mean, I, I love to learn. So you give me, you know, an oil drilling company and I'll be like, heck yeah, tell me about it. Tell me what equipment to use. Tell me all this stuff about, you know, I want to know. Yeah, for sure. And, and I can at least take that and that knowledge and that excitement that I have 
and turn that into you know a website or or you know just a landing page whatever they need that reflects them and reflects the passion that that they have you know and um i you know i, I care about the client and i, I i've always cared into uh, about people you know that that um that intimacy that the relationships there is, is kind of a core value of mine and so i, I rely on I build on I use that to build what I have wow so you're almost like the the developer of somebody's personality into their website you you meet the client you talk to them about their hopes aspirations and dreams for their business or for whatever reason they need a website for and from that relationship you build you then almost artistically turn it into a beautiful website that somebody can be proud of and that represents them as a person. Is that kind of what I got from that? Absolutely. I mean, I, I I always tell my clients, I know what's best for a website to, to keep clients, to rank high on Google, all this stuff. I know what's best and I'll tell you what's best. But if you tell me this is really important to me, you know, I really want this and it kind of goes against that. I'll give it to you because I want it to be your site. You know, I want it mm -hmm. to reflect you. So, yeah. 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 And that's sometimes hard to do. And that's a whole nother topic we could talk about for an hour is, is how to manage client expectations. Cause I have that exactly in my business with, with real estate where somebody could go say, Hey, I want to buy a $6 million house. And it's like, yeah, great. I, I mean, I'd love to get you that, but I mean, we're in the 250 K price point. And so you have to be able to manage those expectations of people where it's like, this isn't right for you. This isn't a smart decision, but at the same time, I represent you and I'm going to do whatever makes you happy, you know? And so sometimes it's bridling your own knowledge to make sure you're benefiting the client, even if that's just emotionally where you're saying, yep, I'm going to make this happen for you because I know this is what you want, even though... I'm biting my tongue in the background thinking that this is maybe not going to be the most beneficial for you. And, and I think that's even more challenging in your business where, I mean, there's very technical things that you put into a website that nobody even fathoms there. They don't even think twice that something like that even exists. And so, um, I want to touch on the fact that, and I've talked about this before, this is a, a very niche type of business of creating websites for people. And obviously web development is very prominent in the world right now because of the internet and things like that. But how did you get to the point where you were like, I'm skilled in this and there's a need for this. I'm going to create my own business. Cause I feel like so many people have incredible skills that they're super, super talented about and they're working a job that doesn't make them happy. And if they could just make the connection of, I'm really good at this and I can help other people be good at this, I'm gonna start my own business. What has that journey been like for you realizing I'm talented in this area and I can provide value to other people, I'm going to jump headfirst in. How did you, what, what were those conversations with your wife like? How did you determine you're, you're gonna go for it and take that plunge? That's a great question. Uh, I'd say it's it probably started with the first website I actually built because because I was I workshopped a few websites and I finally got a you know someone said I need a website built, and they had spent thirty thousand dollars on a website that was garbage. It was trash. It was broken. It didn't work. You know. Oh my gosh. And I said, okay, you know, I've never done this, but I'm happy to do it, and I know I can do it. Yeah. And I delivered them a site that worked. Visually, it might not have been perfect. There were little bugs, you know, little styling issues that I, I looking back, I absolutely should have fixed and could have fixed. Um, but I delivered them a site for 3000 So a tenth of what they paid for a broken site. Yeah. Um, and so going off of that, then continuing and, and building on my skills, I realized, okay, there are people paying way too much to be ripped off or there are people 
who aren't getting what they want, they aren't getting the best, and, you know, I can give it to them, and I'm happy to give it to them, and uh, the conversation with, with my wife was actually fairly short, because she could see that vision and that determination in me, and she was like, okay, go for it, you know, I didn't have to argue it, I didn't have to debate, because she, she saw it, and she knew, yeah. you know, I had that determination, so, it was, yeah. That's super awesome. And so uh, there's another, there's two other things I want to pull from that. The the first is your spouse. If you have the wrong spouse, you're never going to be able to go down the entrepreneurial journey. And so for those that are already married, the work on that, if your spouse is unsupportive or you are unsupportive of your spouse, that you have concerns or whatever it may be, because if you're holding yourself back or holding your spouse back, you could be holding yourself back from setting yourself free from your day-to-day routine that you're currently experiencing. And so having a spouse that is all in on you and knows that you can do it and is totally okay even if you fail, where they're like, I know you're going to succeed, but even if you didn't, we'd be okay. That's the relationship you want. Because without that, you'd never be able to wake up every single day and have the faith that you can succeed and you'd be stressed constantly that there's this shadow behind you, you know? And, and so for the people that aren't married and this is, I don't even know where I'm going for this. I just feel like this is something I want to talk about. If you want to become an entrepreneur, those relationships are really, really important. And you have to build those relationships where you have a fundamental faith in one another that, if crap hit the fan, you could go out and succeed at whatever you wanted to do. And so I think that's really cool that you brought that up when you talked to your wife and that it wasn't even really a conversation that she was just, yeah, like, of course I have faith in you go do it, go chase it, which is extremely exciting. And then on the flip side for what you're offering people, you're able to provide a product to people that have in the past been taken advantage of for things that are not functional. And so for you, what is your most valuable skills or traits that you portray in your business? And what's kind of your value proposition as an entrepreneur? And how did you kind of come up with that? That keeps you motivated to help other people. Um, that's a good question. I guess to, to come up with my, you know, my business values, I just kind of looked at one, who I am and two, who I, you know, the people I, I like to be with and the people I would do business with. Those are the people who are clearly determined. Those are the people who are, are willing to help and lend a hand, even if it, you know, if it's a, big detriment to them, you know, or, you know, people who have that integrity to just speak honestly with you and tell you the truth, even if it hurts or even if it's hard, that's kind of, those are the values that I appreciate. And those are the values that I think other business owners appreciate because you don't ever want to do business with someone you can't trust, you know, um, and someone you can't rely on. So that's kind of where I've put my built my company on those values of of, of integrity um determination and and um you know helping hands yeah and i think as a service provider like we both are honesty is see-through where if you're able to be completely honest with somebody they can feel that and experience that where if you're trying to sell your service to somebody and you are holding information back or trying to take advantage of someone that feeling is going to be left behind where it's going to fester in people and really be a detriment to your career and to your success. And so when we, and specifically you are communicating with a customer, you're able to bluntly and honestly speak with them and say, this is what you need. This is what I can provide. And your values are based off of the trust that you build with your clientele, where you're saying, this is what it's going to cost. This is what I can provide. And this is me being totally honest and transparent with you that this is where my skills and abilities are at. 
And I think it's really important as a business owner, especially when you have these skills that you've been working on for the past significant time and now have created your own business to be upfront with people. Um, for example, when I was a new real estate agent, I, I was asked multiple times, how many properties have you sold or how long have you been a real estate agent? And I could have tried to extend that number or lie and say I've done more than I had, but that helps no one. And so if you can just be honest and say, I'm new, this is, this is something I haven't done before. Or if somebody asks you to work on a website that you haven't had experience building something like that, just from knowing you personally, I know you're the type of person that would say, I'm going to figure it out and I know I can do it, but this is something new for me. And you can trust me in the fact that I'm telling you this honestly, but you can also know that I'm the hardest working person in this room and I'm going to do more than anybody else would. And that's what I love about a integrity filled business is you can feel it when you work with those type of people and you're left with a good feeling and you don't feel like you were scammed where there's a lot of times that I don't feel that way and um, it's challenging, you know? And so for you, now that you're in this business, you're working, what are your plans to grow and where do you hope to take your business and kind of walk me through what your next couple of years hopefully will look like? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm still obviously, like you said, expanding my skills and, and I kind of, I'm trying to build up a network where we can kind of rely on each other and work together. I, I've already, you know, partnered up with a couple of marketing agencies. So yeah, I'm not a marketer, but if you want one and I'm building your site, you can know I'm building it right for marketing. And I can give you a person, tell you who can help you, you know, and then they're also coming back to me and saying, Hey, look, I have this, you know, client, they need a little bit of a you know, workshop on their website and, and building up that network. Um, that, that's kind of a big goal of mine. You know, I like yeah. working together and, so hopefully that brings about some growth, but the, the, the key goal is, you know, hopefully web design takes off. I can expand, I can kind of branch off into marketing and doing other things on my own as well eventually. Um, and then I'm also hoping to get back into development and develop some apps that I have, you know, been bouncing around in my head for a, a year or two and, uh, you know, kind of contribute to society in that way, you know? Wow. The next Mark Zuckerberg sitting here on this podcast. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe, hopefully. <laughs> hey, that's that's super cool. And so, I think, I think the goal with being an entrepreneur and just having the vision of expansion is what is exciting about the everyday life that we experience working for ourselves because we're uncapped. Our potential is unlimited about the things we can do and the things we can experience working for ourselves. And especially when you pair that with networking, because if you're able to connect with like-minded business owners that want to go the same places as you and you solve their problems, they're going to in turn solve yours. And that's what is so cool about the business world is it's so interconnected. There's so many different businesses that support each other where if we all just work together in a sense, who knows what the world would be, would be like, you know? And so for those that you're trying to connect with that may be listening to this podcast, who are those type of businesses? Obviously you want to connect with everybody, but what is your main focus currently for those that you want to network with and connect with and, and grow with? Um, uh, you know, primarily I'm looking for people who, do you know web-based work whether it's marketing or you know even photography or graphic design those fields that kind of interconnect and, and with you know websites and web design those are you know the big ones but i i you know come to find that uh, networking with with any group with any person whether they're you know a general contractor or a hairstylist there can be growth and there, there can be, um, you know, joint growth and, and bonds that can be formed there that 
that help each other grow in ways that you know you don't even expect it yeah um yeah i think um it's funny to look at the current market of self-employed individuals or business owners that don't even have a functioning website where they they have zero online presence and that in today's day and age will destroy your business in my opinion and i think if you are somebody that is currently profitable or is working and growing as a business regardless of what you are photographer contractor whatever you may be getting a website that can grow and be ranked on search engines is only going to help you and is only going to expand your business and so i think that's where you're almost filling that hole in the market of saying i want to help you learn how to put you as a personality and the connection you give people when you're in person with them online so people can see what you offer and what you provide um and it's just so unique to me and that's why i'm talking about this is it's it's amazing what you can create just from the different aspects of being a business owner. It's there's so many things that go into it, which is super, super exciting. And so from a website builder, designer, developer, I know nothing about any of this. And so what I would love to hear from you is, what did it take to learn? I mean, how long have you been working at this to feel like you're confident enough to start your own business? Could you have started earlier? Like for somebody that's wanting to learn a skill to jump into entrepreneurship, how long did it take you and kind of what was your experience there? That's interesting because I would say I was extremely blessed um things kind of worked out from the very start in a way where it just perfectly snowballed and i feel like it came you know the opportunity to start a business and break off on my own came literally at the perfect time cool um i i mean work just kind of came in that slowly built on my skills and i never kind of rested and i would urge anyone in any field never think that you know enough you're you know yeah, enough or too much you don't know it all mm-hmm. keep learning because yeah if you don't you'll 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 be wiped away you know in, in, a, in a day all of a sudden there's a new development and you're not ready for it um so so i've always tried to learn and, and and build on my skills and i think it just i i'd be concerned if i had thought i know enough to start a business I don't think you, sorry, just speaking from my own experience, I guess. Uh, yeah, I could have known more as when I started. I, I could have had more experience for sure. Um, but I had that determination to learn what I needed to, you mm-hmm. know? And so if I had waited and said, oh, I want to wait until I have built, you know, 25 websites or 50 websites. I want to know, wait until I do know, um, graphic design as well, or Photoshop, whatever, I, I wouldn't be here, you know? Totally. Um, so I was able to recognize the weakness that I had and also have the desire to overcome it, I guess. And that's pretty much the whole premise behind that question is you're never going to know everything or enough to start where you feel confident in that. Nobody ever has started anything where they're like, yeah, I, I know everything. I'm going to be good to go and I'm, I'm ready to roll. And when in reality, you, I, you used a perfect term earlier um, when we were talking about just taking the plunge. It's 100%. You can look at the water. You can stare at it and say, I'm prepared for this. I'm going to be okay. But you know nothing until you're actually in the water and have to actually experience what that feels like. And I think that's super insightful that you knew I'm ready enough, but 
I don't know everything. And I'm okay accepting the fact that I'm going to work my face off to get to that point where I'm continually learning, continually growing, but I'm going to start. I'm going to take that plunge because it's the people that sit on the sideline and just continue to watch the water that create problems, you know? And so Mm -hmm. from my experience as a business owner, I think for anyone that is listening, trying to become a business owner, all you have to really do is know enough to provide more value than the people underneath you. There's, there's this, um, scale. I can't remember where I saw it, but if knowledge is based out of one out of 10 and there's people that are a 10, a nine an eight, and say, maybe you're a seven, there's one through seven of people underneath you that you know more than, so you don't know everything. You're only a seven, but you know so much more than the people that are one through seven. And so that's the way you want to approach a business before starting it is if you feel like you have a big enough group of people that you know more than in a topic or a service that you're going to provide, you're golden to jump right in and you're golden to start. And so before we wrap up this episode, I want to ask you the question I ask everybody. If you were to do it all over again, or if you were to talk to somebody ready to jump into business, what would be your number one tip or advice for somebody that's about to start? It'd have to be, I mean, just what we've been talking about, which is, you know, don't be afraid to bet on yourself. Uh, You know, it's a huge change, absolutely. It can be scary, yeah. You're up against some big dogs in some industries. Yeah, totally. Um, but you've got something, you know. You've got a desire. You've got an idea that, that's different, that's better in some way, you know. And and just betting on yourself and the act of doing that, it'll change your whole mindset. I mean, just waking up for work when I was working for someone, no matter how much or little it was, was harder than waking up for myself, starting out, knowing I'm not making any money today, but I'm doing it and I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I want to do. And you know, that, that leap of faith in yourself empowers you to get to where you want to go. Absolutely. So just don't, yeah, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid and don't overthink it either. Mm. I love that. Just, take your head on and just get after it. And so I, I uh, appreciate you hopping on Michael. It's been awesome. I love hearing about your story. I love how you have really taken that fear and turned it into something amazing. That's going to continue to grow. And so for anybody that is listening to this episode, if you want to reach out to Michael, I'm going to put his uh, contact information as well as his website in the comments mention the everyday entrepreneur show and he's going to hook you up with some really really awesome services at a great price he's going to take care of you and i'm super grateful to have michael in my network michael thanks again and uh, we'll finish up this episode of the everyday entrepreneur show